Now in its 10th year, this is GabNet. Talk like you've never heard it before. And this is Harlem, and this is New York City, and this is the Ramble, and we go until midnight tonight. Always have some kind of technical problems before we talk to Lori Thompson. Hey, I'm wearing my glasses today. You are. Now, Ben, now I can't see you. I mean, I can see you, but it's it's a frozen picture. The what? I can see you, but there's, the picture is frozen. Oh, okay. Well, then forget about it. Just to go we'll go back to where you were and let's here just Here we talk. are. Now you're here. I got the good I'm, one of you. I'm, now, I'll take my okay, glasses on. off so you don't have to see me with my glasses if you can see me. <laughs> there we are. Are we good? Yeah, we're good. We're fine. Yeah, Woo-hoo. there she is, ladies and gentlemen. That's Lori Thompson. We always have problems. I, I couldn't figure out. She, I wasn't getting her audio, and it turned out it was on my end. I didn't have the right a thing to hear it through so we're gonna get two dixie cups and a long long string a long yep. string then it'll go all the way down to florida yes. how are things in florida now i guess it's all you've cleaned up and everything right oh yeah and uh we, you know we didn't get hit much but some some areas did and it is all cleaned up and the coverage the tv coverage makes it look selectively much worse than it is well they Although, always show they always show the worst yeah, this is boring. If you ever go back to television, let's just say you do. Okay. And you become a reporter. Yeah. And it's flooding. Mm-hmm. Don't stand out in the flood. Like Dan Rather, what a showboat. During a hurricane, he tied himself to a tree. Of course, that's when he was young. And that's what catapulted him to the network's attention. Tying himself to a tree. Well, anyway, yeah. <laughs> because what they do is they have these people, they're reporting. And I remember one case she was reporting, and she was, like, up to her knees in, in the water, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Obviously wearing galoshes and everything like that. <laughs> her wellies. And, and, and so she does this thing, right? Mm-hmm. And right in back of her is a bank with no water. Well, <laughs> so why didn't she go stand on the bank? I think because it's visually more wow, look, more I mean, dramatic. I, I don't, I don't like my. I want my news reporters to be smart. I don't want them to be dumb. Right, smart and dry. That's the thing. smart and dry. Right. <laughs> so you're indoors today, and there's a uh, there's a uh, fireplace going there. Which yeah, is- I'm trying to, you know, get the preamp uh, the, to the holiday festivities because you're already starting to see it in the stores. And uh, yeah, it's and, uh, not Chris- even I'm looking at my watch. It's not even Christmas yet. No, 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 it's not. But we start using our fireplace uh, about we just do those, uh, you know, goofy logs, the little ones of pressed peat. Yeah, right, and, right. Because they're so handy. And we start. About now, although we can still walk around. I was just outside. It's 75 degrees here. So that's yeah. pretty perfect. Yeah. I have a, you know, we have a fireplace here. I know. I've been to your beautiful apartment. And I, I use wood. Where do you get your wood? I was getting my wood at a, uh, at a store <laughs> here, here in town, but it closed. <laughs> it closed. And they would deliver the wood, too. You know. Yeah. And I had it all kind of stacked up. And, you know. But I got tired of making fires, you know, too much work, yeah. too much work. Make- That's why those little uh, pressed logs or whatever you're doing back there are so <laughs> convenient because you don't have to do anything. They just keep going. Yes. And th- that's what I always use because I don't, you know, I've made fires from scratch before in fireplaces that I've had, and it's just too tedious. I make the most spectacular fires in fireplaces. You do. I know Sca- how to do it and and I do it. And I one time my fireplace, I I used to get this is in San Francisco. I used to get the logs, okay? Yeah. But then I also got what was those things that you uh, you put in there and they are they're they're, they're 
Not ch not charcoal. God, I'm trying to remember. Oh, but those little cubes that would make it blue? Is no, that what you're thinking? No, no. Oh, this okay. was actually something that made it hotter. Really? Yeah, they were they were like coals of some yeah. sort. And you would put them underneath the fire, mm -hmm. and the coals would heat up and keep the fire going. You didn't That's... have to really work at it. It would just keep the fire going. Well, once I made the fire so hot, that it melted the and iron. You're kidding. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. And yeah. iron, folks, in case you don't know, if you've never worked on a, yeah, is, a, is that little, that a metal a, a thing that holds the logs and everything. I, 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 I literally, it melted it. You're on the and iron most yeah. wanted list. But I know how to bank, bank fires, you know. Uh -huh. So that I put down two logs this way, and then I put two logs on top of it that way, and two more logs up in a, like this. And then what happens is you start the fire, and the, the fire goes up as a flue, kind of through the logs, and you get a beautiful fire. Gorgeous. People have commented on how gorgeous my fires looked. Well, I did not know this about you. These handy, these handy skills you have. Well, this isn't eating. a handy skill. I'm basically a budding pyromaniac. <laughs> no, Which is true. always fun to be. It's true. I, I used to I sit there in New York late at night, and I had an ashtray, and I would start burning things in the ashtray. Like if I had some cellophane, I'd put that in. There was some <laughs> other stuff. I'd throw that into the ashtray. And I just made huge fires in this ashtray while I was doing my show. <laughs> For entertainment. Yeah, to entertain yeah, yourself. Yeah. So I'm a Well, I was a pyro guy. when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. And to the point where my mom, I, I had some matches that I'd taken. They were those long ones. Yeah. You know, so I'd take a few of those and carry them with me and found out they would strike on almost anything. Mm -hmm. But then my mother was concerned. And so she started grilling me. Like, are you playing with fire? Like right now, she goes, "You look, you look suspicious. Like you're playing with fire." And I'd be like, "Mom, I'm in the bathtub." You know, it's just like she became hyper, hyper aware. What they should have done is make sure that all their um, all their matches in the house were safety matches and only would light on the box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then you would have to like take the box with you, and that's a little harder to do. Right. Yeah. It would be okay if I could have, I probably didn't have pockets. So you were a budding pyromaniac. Great. I was, we're, yeah. We're buds. <laughs> <laughs> and now it just, once you've owned a home, you don't feel the same way about fire. Okay, well, who makes the fire in your home, Rick or you? I make this one because it's just the goofy logs, you know, the yeah. little handy ones. Yeah. But he can make a real fire. Yeah, he's a good, he's good at it, huh? He was a Boy Scout. He was Order of the Arrow. Which is not Eagle Scout, but it's right up there. So, really? Oh yeah, he has all kinds. I of tried to games. join the Boy Scouts, but my local Boy Scout troop was a Mason, not Masons, uh, 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 Mormons, sure. Mormons. Oh, <laughs> yeah. And they didn't want a Jew in there. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they didn't say Even so. Even though, according to the Mormons, we're the chosen people. You are really according to the Mormons? Yeah. Wow, yeah, I didn't I, I don't know what I, we were chosen for, but we're the chosen people. <laughs> we're contestants on prizes prizes rights. Mm -hmm. You've been chosen. Yeah, because uh the Mormonism I don't know much about. It's always been kind of a punchline because of, you know, having many wives, nudge nudge, wink wink and all that. But Steve Young, uh forty nine or quarterback for Mormon. many years. Was a Mormon. Uh, the, the thing about the wearing the little garment. Well, it's called it's there. called the garment, and it's like it's giant pajamas. It just it goes from your neck. Uh, I think it's like this on the shoulders. Okay. Yeah. And I've never it, seen one. When it goes on your whole body, and you, wear, you have to that wear it under your stuff. So when he was playing football, he probably was wearing the garment. I, it makes sense because that's the impression I got. They had to wear them everywhere, you know, like every it was an everyday thing. Yeah, and, I, I, I've never you, you can't ask a Mormon about the garments because they won't tell you about them. No, they won't. They get a, get pretty tight lipped when it comes to those very. Yeah, personal. but I'd like to know if there are different levels of garments. I mean, it gets very hot out there during the summer. 
Yeah. Is there a light summer version of the garment? I'm sure it's there is. Poplin, I'm maybe. sure there is. I mean, they don't want. Yeah. They don't want to make them out of wool. And during winter, you'd want to make them out of wool, wouldn't you? Yeah, probably yeah. unless people have some trouble with their skin rubbing on the wool. But I see them down here in Florida when it's broiling hot. And they're they're always wearing a suit. I am hoping they're made of a cotton poly blend instead of, like and you're saying, Mormons wool. you're saying are doing, are doing that? Wearing in suits Florida? all the time? Well, no, I said I'm hoping they're going with the poly, with the poly cotton blend because wool in this weather. Yeah. But I see many Mormons down here going doing their evangelistic. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That thing. Yeah. Pain in the ass. Well, God love them. I mean, it's, yeah, but you got you got to say I'm not interested. Yeah, and I and, and they're used to that, you know. And they're only doing it because they have to do that as part of the religion. They have to go out and uh, and and go door to door and everything for about a year or two or something like that. Yeah, I mean it's yeah. a mission. I don't know if they call it a mission. I think it's called a mission. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and they are dedicated to it. And I guess some teams who are like BMOCs and you know quarterback with Steve Young and a, a big shot take a break from that and do the mission which would keep you humble i think and it's a good idea because you get acquainted with all kinds of people it's a good lesson in life yeah it's a good lesson in life it's a good lesson in life of rejection <laughs> yeah because but, you come uh, to my door i'm going not interested bam you know well they're starting to put uh the book of mormon in marriott hotels we stay at Marriott's because my husband has like five billion platinum points where you can stay free and get upgrades and um so but we've noticed there's a Book of Mormon in a lot of Marriott hotels. Oh really? So, I yeah. Think, uh, Mar is Marriott Mormon? I think they may be. They must be. Yeah. Because yeah, then there's JW Marriott, which is a higher you know it's a higher tier. Yeah. Um, but I see I'm notorious about stealing hotel bibles. I don't think it's stealing hotel bibles because the Gideons want you to take it. That's my logic. And oh, so really? I got a oh, French, okay. I got a German one. <laughs> it's basically the New Testament. Yeah, like, yeah. I'm I'm just saying uh, actually I went to a Marriott and I went to the room and yes I did have the Book of Mormon. The whole cast came up to the room and did the show. <laughs> you know, I've seen that. I saw that on Broadway years and years ago. Oh, it's a great but, show. It's a great yeah. show. Yeah, well, no, I, I saw that. Let me see when it was. Uh, was it a trilogy before that they and there was a Mormon segment of this trilogy before they did the Book of Mormon as a standalone musical. And mm. that's the part I saw. There were different segments. Yeah, well, the, book, it, of, the book of Mormon was done by the guys who do South Park. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean those guys that's talk about only... following your bliss. Those guys, doing, they are laughing and doing funny voices with their best friend. <laughs> that's, <laughs> yeah. that's been on South Park, I think, is, geez, I, 50, 25 years, something like that. I know. And you blink and it's gone. I would have said maybe 12. Family Guy is, I think, in its 25th. Mm -hmm. And The Simpsons. What and is, The Simpsons been... is in its, I think, 35th or something like that. Yeah, because they started on the Tracy Ullman show. Yeah, as a, there's, uh, there's a little official. segment on the Tracy Ullman show. Yeah. yeah. But you just got back from Paris. No, no, How... no, no. I'm going to Paris. Oh. Well, after, as we're recording this, this is going to be played tonight. Okay. okay, so I am going, and then I'm actually I play another one of you before I leave. Uh, although I might not, I I have to figure it out first. You know, I had to figure your programming schedule. Yeah. Well, um, yeah, you're gonna have so much fun, but you know, do the wheelchair option then. Do mm -hmm. I would recommend because I had I sprained my ankle, mm -hmm. and I was having uh, I had fractures in my back. And so I yeah. got one simply, I couldn't, I couldn't walk that far. I simply couldn't. So we got one once and it's, it's a great way to go. They're efficient. They get you where you're going and it's a, and are respectful about it. Yeah. 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 Well, I, I, we have, we have a, a whole thing where Marjorie's uh, the travel agent uh, yeah. set it up so that she needs one too. 
Really? Yeah. Well, that, but then you'll be together, see, because that was the only thing when I had to get that wheelchair. I didn't see Rick. So, I mean, I assumed he was, you know, I would see him on the plane, but you're separated for a while. And, you know, well, you what, mind happened, what happened? Did they have somebody push you? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Good natured person, kind, you know, not condescending at all. Did you have to all. tip them afterwards? I did. You did? Yeah. What did you, what did you I, tip? I, I, no, know if you're obligated to. 20 bucks? No. <laughs> well, how much? Yeah, 10. 10? Oh, I'm, I figured 20. I, yeah. You, I just get a whole bunch of $20 bills and hand them out like there, you know. Throwing them around like daddy boy. Yeah, well, no, Marjorie is going to need one, too. So it's going to be the two of us in wheelchairs. Yeah. And, and they, they get you through uh, TSA faster, doesn't it? Oh, everything goes faster. And uh, you two together, see, that will be, because that was the only alarming thing about it. It's like, I didn't see Rick. I didn't know who we were going to end I'm up. just afraid, though, see, because she's getting a, a wheelchair, and I'm getting a wheelchair, that they're somehow going to figure out that we're phonies. But you're not phonies, uh, You know, ben. because, she, I mean, I, oh, you've got a cane with you. Oh, big deal. You yeah, know. but um, no, there there are some phonies, I'm sure, but um, you're not phonies. I mean, I, you know, when we get perks that are senior citizen, I always am chagrined to a degree. But then I'm like, does this make sense? Wait a minute, you're and, how old now? 64. Oh, you're just right on the edge of senior citizen. Right, but a lot well, of places... The minute, minute you get a Social Security check, you're a senior. Okay, I haven't gotten that for yet. Okay. So I'm not official. But a lot of places, like at the movie, like I mentioned this before, when they give you the senior discount and you, they don't even ask you, it's like, wait a minute. <laughs> Are you just assuming I'm old? And uh, that that's a little... That's humbling. Yeah, well, I've been going to this physical therapy... Yeah, which you're not, you weren't real crazy about well, last time. Well, I, I don't know if it's working or not, but I'll tell you what I'm doing that is working. I went out and bought a pair, I went online, I said, shoes for neuropathy. Yeah, and which is really. this site called uh, Corrupts or something like that is the name of it. And, Sounds true. Uh, here, it here it is. It's uh, Kirku. Uh, mm -hmm. Kuru. K U R U. And they make shoes? Yeah, yeah. They make really nice sneakers, really great sneakers, but they're reinforced in a different way. The heel is really is very reinforced. Yeah. And uh, I put them on, and they're not comfortable immediately. You have to wear them for a while. Mm -hmm. But it forces me to go heel toe, heel toe. Ah, uh -huh. very good. So it's therapy helps me right walking, built in. Which helps me walking. Yeah. Yeah. So I uh, I'm using these new new sneakers now, and I think they're gonna they're gonna be okay. They're gonna help me a great deal. Yeah. Good. 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 It's, I mean, even little incremental things that help. Boy, you know, for, forget it. People are listening to us. They're going it's just two old people talking about old people <laughs> stuff. And no, I'm thinking just of just starting a, a show called Old People Stuff. Yeah. And people can oh, call and people, talk. Right? You know. I, <laughs> Well, the the thing with me is I'm not the tallest person in the world. Madonna and I are about the same size, according to JFK. And so I like a little height on all my shoes, which steer me away How from sneakers. How tall are you? About, I always say 5'4". That's a big exaggeration. Well, Marjorie is 5'3", five, 5'4", five, or something that, like that. That's, yeah, I'm in that zone. And so... Um, well, I, was always hot, I was always hot for short women. Yeah, you like us. I don't like tall, a tall women. Yeah. Although I did that, go with a tall woman for a while. You sure did. I remember her. Really? Yeah. Yeah, she was tall. Uh, uh, -huh. uh You know, and, uh, but I usually, that tall doesn't turn me on. Yeah, well, yeah. it's, to each his own. Yeah. But I think that the thing I, I don't like about it is people tend to be dismissive of petite people. And so I always wear a high heels and I'm always taller than I really am. But uh, then Converse and Puma, the Converse Chuck Taylors are the better, came out with a platform. And that platform, they've got a platform and you can get a variety of soles. And it gives you enough height 
so that you feel like you're among the people and you're, um, you know, you're comfortable. Oh, you're I didn't know that. Yeah, they've yeah. got several now. Most most tennis shoe makers well, the, make These a things have a reinforced heel. They're very heavy reinforcement on the heel. Yeah. On the back of it. And then it has a real nice arch and so on. And so it doesn't hurt as much as the other sneakers do. And it forces me, as I said, to walk heel, toe, heel, toe, which is... When you get neuropathy, you have a tendency to just slide. Yeah. You know, Marjorie can hear me slide. <laughs> and that causes you to fall, too, you know. Yeah. I mean, so that's very proactive of you. That's well, I'm good. going to bring my new sneakers to my PT today and see if they approve. Good idea. Yes. Because yes. uh, there are so many products out there. Like if you have a chance to look through it, what is the magazine, AARP, yeah. half of their things are advertisements for things like that, so that you don't really know. Well, I mean, I have, what, what are my current sneakers are Skechers. Oh, man, yeah, everybody in the world, Skechers is not going to be happy till they take over everybody's feet. They're on a campaign. Yeah, but they're not very solid. You know? Really? Well, they have a lot of give in them. You know, oh, okay. I can I, you know, a little flop over to the side this way, a little flop over. These shoes, because they have a really reinforced heel, force my feet straight ahead. That's and good. And don't, don't uh, you know, they, they, it doesn't seem they're good. They're terrific. I think they're going to do the deal for me. Maybe they're even better ones, but this one's okay. Kuru, yeah, Kuru, see, that's what you called. find out things that work for you. Like Bionic, I love boots. I have so many cool boots, but they're hard to. I'm still not healed enough in my ankle to wear them. You know, nobody, nobody today. I see lawyers going into court wearing sneakers. Yeah, it's just it's okay now. You know, it's all the young entrepreneurs. And you can tell because of the white bottoms. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, Silicon Valley, you know, made it cool to wear uh, ultra casual, basically anything you want, and it would be okay. And I appreciate Silicon Valley for that. Yeah, but I'm saying these are lawyers, and they have to get dressed up to go to court, and they got a tie and a jacket, and you know, they're wearing a suit. And yeah, they're wearing sneakers. Uh huh. Yeah, and it's accepted. Yeah. Well, what and these casual Fridays? Remember, we used to joke, "What do hookers wear on Casual Friday?" <laughs> but, uh, and uh, you know you can find a lot of things that make what you're dealing with uh, physically easier that aren't aren't outrageous. I'll tell you the best dressed hooker I ever saw. We were in a late night restaurant here in New York called the Brasserie. Uh -huh. uh, I and my friend Bruce David, who is one of, one of my friends who's now gone, and we're sitting there. And as we're sitting there, this woman walks in, and she's topless. What? In the, in the and diner? And she walks down the steps. They have these long stairs. She walks down the steps, topless, goes over to the counter, and sits down. And I said to Bruce, what's that all about? He said, well, let me go find out. <laughs> so I've he went over vision. and sat down next to her and started talking with her. And we're watching him talk back. And finally, he's finished. He gets up and comes back. I said, so what's the deal? Why is she topless? And she says, I'm a prostitute, and I think it pays to advertise. <laughs> She's right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just, she was topless. No, uh, yeah, nothing. I mean, if, if they don't throw her out and the cops don't have a problem with it, she's correct. Pays to advertise. Well, if you don't have a problem with it, why not? You know. Yeah. It, it helps. <laughs> it helps make the decor better. <laughs> it know. was branding, marketing. It, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I remember it was that same uh, same place I had a breakfast one morning with a good friend of mine, Robert Downey, who was a director. Oh yeah, the, the director. Uh, the, father of well, the one we know. And he brought his son to breakfast. He was a oh, little wow. kid at the time. Little kid. <laughs> Robert Downey Jr. Yeah. Yeah. So people say, have you precocious? ever met Robert Downey Jr.? I go, yeah, I had a lot of breakfast with him. <laughs> you know. But is, uh, was he, did you see signs of uh, no. cinema greatness no. in him? No, no. He was just, he brought the kid with him. Uh-huh. You know. <laughs> 
I think Kim was a nice I, kid. Yeah. I like Robert Downey Jr. because he's been pretty frank about his struggle with addiction. And he yeah. seems to over have overcome it. And his living, he's got that nice wife, Susan. And he seems to be living uh, an overcoming life. Well, I've never been honest about my addiction, but I just, I keep doing it. What the hell? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just, you know. I won't say right. what it is. My addiction is whatever happens to come along. You got a joint? Fine. You got some coke? <laughs> Good. I'll do that. What are you packing? <laughs> what, what are you packing? What, 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 what's, what's for lunch? Hey, we're was... gr- if we run out of time for this one. Oh, my goodness. And I got to go to P- names. I've got to go to P.T., PC, you look at you throwing your slang around, PT. Yeah. PT. <laughs> Thank you very much, Lori. We'll see you next week. It is my pleasure. I will see you. Bye bye. <laughs> now in its 10th year, this is GabNet. Talk like you've never heard it before. And that's Lori, and Lori will be back with us next week. I can't talk straight. What's my problem? I don't know. I'm losing it. Goodbye. I'll see you later. I'm, yeah. But anyway, uh, hi, how are you? I know, you're probably really edgy, right? Because we got this election coming up, and uh, the entire history of the United States is standing on the precipice of it. Uh, What happens next Tuesday, well, it may not happen Tuesday. It may happen a month later. We don't know. It could be two months later. Remember how long it took with uh, Al Gore? Was it it February, I think? I I don't remember. But anyway, Uh, it's just uh, amazing uh, um, what's been happening here. And the latest thing is, is that we've got uh, our, our president, uh, Biden, who opened his yap. Boy, you know, I, I just wish he'd shut up, okay, and let her get elected. Um, uh, but as you may remember, a few days ago at the, uh, at the uh, Madison Square Garden uh, folly that, uh, that uh, 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 Trump held, uh, at a place that normally you hold circuses, okay? Uh, here, this was a circus. He got a comic who came on. Never heard of the guy before and probably never will again. And he's used to doing roasts, okay? So he comes on, makes a very negative remark about uh, about uh, Puerto Rico, which I, I could repeat again, but it's you've heard it a million times already. And the Republicans were assailed for that. You know, how could you let this guy get up and do that? And, of course, Trump says, I never heard of the comedian before in my life. Well, then why was he booked on your show? Don't you have any control over this sort of stuff? Anyway, he made the joke about, you know, uh, there's a giant uh, 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 island of garbage uh, out in the ocean. It's called Puerto Rico. Thank you very much, folks. I'll be here all week. All right. So he does that. And then they get, the Democrats will pounce on anything. So they pounced on that, as I guess well they should have. It was tasteless remark about what is a, a island that is... Uh, all the people living on that island, by the way, are Americans, in case most people don't know that. They're not foreigners. Uh, uh, and uh, Puerto Rico is uh, is just not a state. It's uh, territory. Yeah, I think that's what they call it. Anyway, uh, uh, so it was a very tasteless remark, and uh, the, the, uh, the Democrats, of course, have pounced on that as well they should. Well, then, Trump, then Biden, in talking about this guy telling this joke, said something about... Uh, 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 the followers or something, I can't remember what the statement was exactly, are garbage themselves. Well, he meant the followers of that comedian. In fact, when I first saw the remark, I said, oh, he's referring to the comedian, his followers, you know. Uh, But the Republicans have taken it to mean that he was saying all Republicans who follow Trump are garbage, and then uh, all of a sudden they're going, oh, look, see how bad uh, Biden is? He's, he's worse than our guy was. Does that make any sense? doesn't make any sense. 
Uh, so th this is going back and forth and back and forth, and it's just it's crazy, you know. Let me go on record here as saying that when you call people who follow Donald Trump garbage, you're absolutely right. Okay, so I just thought I'd mention that. Anyway, <laughs> yes, Phil, if you're listening, that includes you. Okay, anyway, where are we? Uh, bu 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 we have some callers here. Uh, I have to uh, go. Uh, oh, I forgot to open this up here. Uh, participants, and then I let everybody in. Oh, hey, here we got a bunch of people. We got Charlie Wallace, and we got Alan, and we got Charlie. Okay, let me see here. Is uh, well, I said admit all. Okay, here we go. Come on, come on. There they go. Are they coming? Yeah, there we go. And uh, there's Alan, and there's Josh Wheeler. Hello, all of you. Hey. Hey. Yeah. I'm getting a little tired of just this whole election cycle. It's just becoming childish. It actually started know. January of 2021. What? Yeah. It actually started. It actually started right after the um, Biden was inaugurated. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, it, it, it's just, but it's just become too childish on both sides. You know, I think what, I think what Biden said was good. He hasn't said many negative things and because uh, he's not a negative person like Trump. But Trump says he's the worst president we've ever had. So it's all right. Well, first he says he's the that. guy doesn't have a brain left in his head, that he's an old man and he's doddering and he's, you know, whatever. And I then know. when the guy makes a mistake, he jumps all over it. Yeah. yeah. You're talking about Trump. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You know, but I mean, if you read the statement it, it, that uh, that Biden made, it was he was basically referring to the followers of the people who follow Absolutely. that comedian. Absolutely. You know, but I could have gone without being said, but oh well. No, well, Biden should keep his mouth shut. You know, yeah. this yeah. woman's trying to win an election here, and she needs every bit of uh, cachet that she can get. Yeah. Um, well, the difference is Biden's not the candidate, and Trump is. So when Trump says something stupid like that, it matters because he's the candidate. Candidate. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, they try to they try to say that uh, you know that the candidacy of Kamala is uh, is, is basically uh, the Biden regime. Okay, everything that could be attributed to Biden or blamed on Biden, they're now blaming on Kamala because she was the last person in the room. Yes, yeah, so it doesn't mean that anybody listened to her. You know, she was a vice president. Come on, you know. Yeah, she had no power. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's an old story about there was a mother, and one of her sons became a sailor, and one of her sons became vice president of the United States, and she hasn't heard from either of them since. <laughs> you know, so, I mean, come on. Hmm. Uh, but anyway, so the, it just but it's just become so childish, and it's just you know I'm tired of it already. I'm exhausted. You're telling me that you're telling me that that Trump's team didn't vet these these uh, comedians. I don't believe it. Well, I mean, if they in the, in the uh, teleprompter, so they saw all the jokes ahead of time. Right. Right. So I'm sure they had to vet these people. And they found a no-name comedian that nobody's heard of. Well, he was on the he was on the Tom Brady roast. Yeah. Excuse me. <laughs> Boy, I never heard of him. That. I never heard of him. Okay. You know. Neither have I. Neither. But but he uh he uh you know, I mean it was a tasteless joke and and Trump then says, well, I don't even know who this guy is. Well, then why was he on your show? You know, you have right. to assume some kind of responsibility for this. You know, you could say, well, nobody ran him past me, but uh, had they done it, I probably would have looked at what his jokes were, you know, or something like that. Well, Trump wouldn't say that. Trump's not that smart. Oh, excuse uh, me. He's very smart. It's Kamala who's dumb. <laughs> so, Alex, uh, I got a text from one of the people that he says, tell Alex to switch views. 
we can't see the group. That you're oh, talking. I see. Okay, excuse oh. me. Excuse me. This happens to me all the time. I get so wound up here in doing the show that I, you know. But they, you could hear them. It's what are you complaining good. about? Yeah. You could hear them. Yeah, really. He knows. He knows what we all look like. He's a regular on Amy's show, so. Yeah, yeah. Uh, unless Amy isn't there. <laughs> well, then he. But they. But but he listens to uh, the ramble anyhow. So. Yeah. Anyway. So, um, it's just getting, it's just, I don't know, it's gotten to the point where I'm just so tired. I'm tired of both of them, oddly enough. I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah. you know, and it, it's not that I'm tired of Kamala, but, you know, she's have she, they get their stump speech. And the stump speech is the speech that they give almost everywhere they go, okay? And the only thing that changes in the stump speech is if some little news item has happened that day or they're in Chicago and they she want they wanted to open up with hello Chicago the greatest city in America or whatever they add that to it they punch that in there but basically it's the same speech all the time and now that we have these 24/7 news operations they run her speeches every time she talks but it's the same goddamn speech, and I'm tired of hearing it over and over and over again. Although Marjorie sits there and goes, hey, shh, Kamala's giving a speech. And I'm going, yeah? <laughs> you want me to, like, lip sync it for you? You know, I mean, amazing. Just amazing. How you doing, Josh? Doing good. How you doing? How do you think things are going? Yeah, about the same, I think, you know. It's uh, tied up and going to matter, depend on who turns out the most people to vote. Well, is it tied up? You know? Well, I mean, the the info out there we have says that. In reality, I have no idea. I don't know that anybody knows. Well, uh, I certainly don't. so far in the live voting, the voting that's been taking place, you know, over 50 million votes have been cast so far. Yeah, yeah I've, I've seen that, yeah, which, you know, that's... That's pretty yeah. good. Positive news, of which regardless. Forty-one percent of Democrats, forty percent are Republicans, and nineteen percent are, I guess, independents or undecided or whatever. Well, who knows how those people voted? Who knows yeah. how they're going to vote? Right, exactly. Well, that's the big question. I mean, I think she's doing a nice job. I mean, the speech on the ellipse, I didn't get to hear much of, except a few little things. I'll sit down and watch it later, but. It looked nice. It's you know, I mean, look, they have a professional campaign. You know, mm. Trump has a bit of an amateur hour type deal because it's a bit of a free for all. And okay, uh, but answer like that, answer me answer me this one. That speech last night on the ellipse, okay, mm -hmm. which is by the way where Trump gave his speech before he sent his people yeah. up to the yeah. Capitol to destroy it. Mm -hmm. um, she gave this. She had this gathering. Okay, and that's very nice, and we're we're very happy for her. Uh, and by the way, the crowd was bigger than Trump's talk. Yeah, well, then she probably could have <laughs> completely destroyed the Capitol if she wanted to. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, um, it it was just that I I you know I just found that uh, what was where was I going to go with that? Oh well, I forgot. I'm sorry, I interrupted you. Yeah, I I, I, I don't. We're going to talk about her speech. You know, but well, I mean, the speech was the same speech, basically. You know, uh, it improved upon a little bit and so on. You know, but oh, I know what it was. So they're talking about it, and they're saying she's making her final speech, mm -hmm. her final well, bid for the presidency. Yeah. And I'm going, okay, that's her final bid. And today she's in Pennsylvania giving another speech. Yeah. Now, that wait a minute. Which one's the final it wasn't, one? Right? I was going to say, she's going to be all week talking places. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and the same thing about the one at Madison Square Garden was Trump's final speech to the nation. Now they'll they'll go right up till next Monday. Yeah, Monday night they'll be. <laughs> yeah, so. Well, I remember what presidents, what people who running for the presidency used to do. They used to buy time on the networks the night before the election. Yeah. And I'm give sure. their final speech. But yeah. what are you doing I'm, giving your I'm final? I'm sure that 
you know, the commercials and halftime commercials during Monday Night Football, for example, will yes. be nonstop political ads because yes. that's the most oh. watched program on Monday night, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, more people will have that on on Monday night than anything in, in the country, yeah. you know, because Monday Night Football is the highest, highest rated television program of its kind, basically. So, yeah, that'll be, you know, they're going to make a lot of money Monday night. Yeah. <laughs> yep. You know, somebody is, not us, but, but yeah, yeah, I'm sure, you know. You know, her, um, her, you know, her speech is a great speech, but it is a stump speech, and it is pretty much the same. And uh, I just want to point out, I paid $2.35 a gallon for gas last night. $2 and what? $2.35. So tell me about inflation. Well, you're in Texas. I'm yeah, in you're Texas. in Texas. But yeah, I'm California. saying it's still more than it was four years ago. Um, it, it's been hovering around three dollars where I live, and it's been below a, a day or two. I bought it; it was below. A day or two, I bought it in the last month. Let's say it was above. So it's been in that two ninety to. Any of the range. any of these Trump lovers who say, "Well, he was better with the economy than Biden was," uh, Biden to begin with wow. inherited his economy. Yeah. Okay. And secondly, he has improved on that economy. Yeah. So uh, uh, what, what's, what's the problem here? Yeah. You know, why are yeah. you saying that things are not as good today as they were under, under Trump? Well, that's I, only 230,000 jobs created in October. And we're not even done with the month stock, yet. Stock market a couple of weeks, about a week ago, it's down now, but a couple, about a week ago, yeah. surpassed all-time numbers for yeah. the stock market. Yeah, I mean, you know, and I I think I told you guys this before, and, and I send the screenshot to Patrick and Kevin here and there, but, you know, uh, I have my stuff, you know, invested fairly decently, I think, and, you know, my personal rate of return on one of my 401k ac accounts year-to-date, and we're pretty far through the year, is 38.4%, you know? Wow. I made a lot of money this year. Well, I'm, pre I'm, pretty, I'm right? pretty much where I was, and I've been spending money like crazy. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I have mine. Yeah, right. I mean, I have mine in aggressive growth areas, you know, because I can take the, I can afford the risk. Mm -hmm. but Young still. The aggressiveness. Uh, I mean, if usually that would yield twenty percent. I mean, I like. I mean, I could show the picture i mean it's 38.4 percent on one account and i've got another account that's like 35 percent. so yeah. yeah you know i mean the people who think that the economy isn't good are the people who are saying well i went to the grocery store and and uh, cherries still cost more than they did last yeah. week well, well you know i mean there, there's th some that, fairness. well that's that's the metric by which they go but the fact right. is that they don't realize that those people who are who are uh, selling food to the grocery stores, not the grocery stores themselves, but the people who are selling yeah. to the grocery yeah. stores are, uh, are uh, uh, what do you call it? What's the word we're looking for? They're, uh, uh, oh, God, my mind's a blank. Well, they're gouging people for gouging. sure. Gouging. They can, you know? Yeah, they're gouging people. Yeah. And gouging is not something the government can stop unless they, you know, really aggressively go after it. Yeah. Uh, but in every all the other metrics, right. uh, I mean, even the cost of living has gone down. You know, yeah, I mean, you know, I'm sure there. I mean, there are some things you know that are there. But listen, no, no one is acting like the country doesn't have problems. Country always has well, here, problems. Big country with lots of people. You know. Yeah, uh, I mean, it, taking a. I'm a yeah. Kamala is going to get the vote in California, but California is not doing as well as Texas and 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 maybe Ohio and stuff like that. Gas is between being uh, in between five and six dollars a gallon for a while. You know, I paid five forty today or something like that. Food prices have doubled. Um, I don't know if they've doubled. No, they the haven't doubled. The market did great a couple of weeks ago. Now it's dropping. I don't think the president has anything to do with the stock market. Fuel Not prices, day, fuel prices. He's got very little to do with, right. you know. Food prices. I mean, it's the gouging, but yeah, things are not looking as good in the economy. Uh, housing prices continue to go up. Uh, rent continues to go up in California, but fortunately, California's going to Kamala. So, well, yeah, you see, I mean, people, I... people, people are. 
Uh, you know, I mean, it's it's people who are gouging more than anything yeah. else. You know, uh, I mean, uh, the price of food. You can't blame that on 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 uh, Biden. He's done everything to bring the prices down, but it's up to those people who are gouging to bring them down. Yeah. yeah. Or yeah. for us to go after the gouging. Which we aren't very aggressive in doing. That I will have to argue that, you know. Yep. But Trump isn't going to change any of that. Nope. These people don't r realize how bad they're going to have it once Trump becomes, if he becomes <laughs> president. That they, he's going to put tariffs on everything and the prices are going to go sky high on everything. Yep. You want a new TV set? It's going to cost twice as much. Yeah. 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 See, Trump keeps lying about who pays the tariffs. He's making it act like the country's China and They will Japan. pay the tariffs, but then, the tariffs. They, then they'll pass it on to us. Yeah. No, they aren't paying anything. I mean, if Toyota has a $20,000 car. It only cost, you know, they sell it to us for $20,000, and we, sell, yeah. we put the 10% tariff on it. Now it's $22,000. Who do you I mean, think pays that $2,000? The person for, that buys the car. Those foreign countries are... Permitted to to impose the same uh, likeness of taxes, tariffs on our goods flowing into yeah. their country as well, which could cause their people to buy less and could hurt American manufacturing. I mean, it's it, it is a two way street, yeah. you know. I mean, my company, for example, sells many products overseas, you know, some of which is made overseas directly, some of which is not, you know. So, um, you know, and it's not the only. I mean. All, many companies do that. So, uh, including the American agricultural uh, economy. I mean, you know, we send a lot of food overseas, especially grain and a few other things, you know. So, I mean, you can go to, you know, Duluth, Minnesota and watch freighter after freighter roll in and out with grain headed through the St. Lawrence Seaway to Spain yeah. and other, you know, places like that. So, I mean, you know, it's, it is a, global economy and you know i mean it's okay that they think so but i just isolationism in my opinion doesn't work it's been tried yeah. several times and it's ended badly each time you know so you know it's not a, it's not the path that i would recommend for sure right i mean right. you know but they they're very good at getting people I mean, why do they keep talking about the economy? I mean, 90% of what he says about the economy isn't true and is greatly exaggerated, but that doesn't matter to him. He just keeps saying it over and over and over and over and over again, and people keep playing him saying it over and over and over and over and over again. Then yep. sometimes they break down why what he said wasn't true, but by then most people have changed the channel or moved on yeah. to something else, you know? Kim Kardashian's got a new picture on Instagram, and I'm going to check that out now. I'm busy. I didn't have time to hear the explanation of why everything he said was bullshit. So, you know, that's their point is it just keeps well, saying. Well, also, you know, I, I the last couple of days I've kind of looked at Fox and I've watched Trump speak and the people speaking on Trump's behalf. And mm. if you live in that ecosphere mm. and oh, you yeah. don't hear anything else, yeah. you're going to believe the message. You would have a very negative view of the United States of America. Yeah. 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 Uh, you know. But the fact of the matter is, the main thing is, what he d has done is something, I think Hitler did this too, quite a few countries have done this from time to time to, you know, it's what I call the belling the cat yeah. theory. Uh, basically, what Trump says is, elect me, I will go outside the mouse hole and I will bell the cat so that anytime the cat is out there, you will hear him. Okay? Mm -hmm. All I want you to do is give me power. The mouse who told that story to the other mice uh, wanted power. And that's how he's trying to get it too, by fear. Now the big fear is all these migrants are coming in and they're raping your children, right? right? And they're, uh, um, uh, yeah, they're raping your children, which is a horrible thing. Uh, yeah, they're, uh, they're eating your cats and dogs. Uh, we can go on with any number of things. But what he's done is he's made all the people in those audiences fearful and saying, I'm the guy that can solve the problem. But the fact is, 
God. There really isn't a problem out there. Yes, there are a few immigrants in here who came mm -hmm. in over the border who are causing problems, and they're no good nicks, and fine, you know. But the criminals, like any other, you arrest them, you either throw them back in the pond, yeah. or you throw them in jail, right? right. Right. Yeah. But the rest of it, the rest of them are just people who want a better life for their kids and their wives. And, they, you know, they, they just came here uh, to, to, to get a better life going. And the, the fact is that, that Trump is selling Amer the, his people a bill of goods, that he's going to solve a problem that doesn't exist. Yeah. He tried that the first time and he couldn't do half of what he said. Right. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, I mean, right? This, this in, their plan. Yeah, but you get what I'm saying here. I mean, yeah. that, it's terrible. It is just yeah, I terrible. Mean, you know, uh, several of the issues that they bring up that they're scaring people with and providing these solutions for, what they say are solutions. Mm -hmm. you hear me? You know, mm -hmm. are are really not problems. You know, I mean, it's funny that you know uh, when I watch television on my computer when I'm at work, you know, the server that the company has that it connects to is located in Chicago and it has me getting television from like the Milwaukee, Wisconsin TV market. Yeah. And I'm seeing their political ads when I'm watching. And uh, you know, what I've found is with Tammy Baldwin, of Wisconsin, for example, they are running the same exact commercial, same footage and everything yeah. against her as they are here against Sherrod Brown in Ohio. And it's and the whole commercial is about transgender men playing with your girl on her basketball team or her swim team or her volleyball. I mean, this is not a problem. No. <laughs> I'm saying, I mean, well, they show the six it's, foot four I mean, guy. It's weighs 250 right. pounds. Yes. They show the manliest looking woman you've ever seen, you know, playing high school basketball. I mean, if this happened, fine. But, this there are like three people in America that this is a problem. Well, for. also this lie, this there, lie, you know? this lie that he's been perpetuating, and I can't believe he keeps mentioning it over and over and over again about you're going to send your kids to school and they're going to yeah. come back without a penis. Well, yeah, to begin right. with, you know, to begin and, and, with, you know, in, case I, you, in case you haven't looked at your daughter, yeah, okay, and, you know, uh, uh, but, but also, I mean. The, the fa is that logical that they can cut off a penis mm -hmm. and then send your kid right back home again right. without, without being not, in the hospital you for cannot days? cannot recover in three hours. <laughs> you know, it's not. There are already laws against some of this stuff. No, yeah. but wait a minute. I mean, that, what gets me, there are people who are believing what he yes. says. Oh, absolutely. I hear people every day does, discussing. Does, does Phil believe you know. this crap? Uh, um no? I, I I don't think so. I don't think so. But you know, I think that if you cut off a penis, you send them home with a penis and a my pillow pillow. Yeah. yeah. But you no, know, I, 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 I mean, people... it's, it's such a stupid bullshit. Yeah. yeah. I, and why I... anchors ask them, give me one example of that right. happened. Tell me one place specifically where that happened. Yeah. No, but he said I mean, it can it asked. could it could happen under under Kamala. Oh, okay. well, you know, but I mean, you know, I, I have seen people going back and forth and, you know, someone will pause it, you know, like, oh, so you, I mean, you're okay with some transgender man being in the locker room with your, no, I mean, it, it's almost like they believe that some guy, or really, this isn't a guy, it's like a 40 year old man. I mean, it's a high school age boy would tr it, it, like transgendered himself so he could get in the locker room with your daughter so he could rape her in there or something like that seems like a lot of work, you know, to commit a crime. I mean, you know, but maybe that's just me. I mean, you know what I'm saying? I mean, it's just very far fetched. It's 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 just out there, you know. I mean, it's these all, these are uh, not these are all far fetched problems. things, and they are elect yeah. me, and I will solve the problem. Correct, you know. Well, and that's what of I'm course, saying. it's very easy to solve a problem that doesn't exist. It doesn't exist, you know. And look, if there is a school district here that has a transgender male. In the girl sports issue and all that. Okay. I thought you guys were for freedom and local school districts deciding what worked for their local school districts. So let that local school district figure out what they want to do with the citizens of that county and, and let, let that play out, you know? Maybe somewhere it is and somewhere it isn't. I'm not saying I know all the answers to this stuff. I'm just saying 
this problem is so teeny tiny itsy bitsy that you can't even see it with a microscope, let alone I need to weigh it in my mind on who I want to vote to be my U.S. senator. You know, I mean, that's that's my I mean, I guess I don't really care what my U.S. senator thinks about that because it's it's I mean, that's. I mean, if I asked him where he stood on stray cats, that would be a more logical topic to get his opinion on yeah. than transgender men playing women's basketball in the eighth grade. Yeah, but the, he isn't even talking. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't think he's even talking about that. He's just talking about sending your kid to school and getting their penis whacked off. <laughs> they don't even have money. Wait a minute. To give I, wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> getting your penis whacked off is good. Cut off is bad. Yeah. Let me restate that. <laughs> that. That I mean. I don't know what to say about that, you know? I mean, <laughs> I mean like, I know, but I'm saying that I these wouldn't people, be concerned about that, but people you know, maybe some people tr- are in the Trump ecosystem. This is all they're hearing. They're not hearing what, you know, the other oh, si- side saying the truth. And quite sure. frankly, you know, for those people out there listening who are like Trump supporters who say, well, you don't listen to him. Well, I do, actually. I watched that whole thing he did the other night at Madison Square Garden, for instance. Mm -hmm. You know, because I never miss a Rudy Giuliani appearance. Uh, You know, but I mean... I have to spend three days in the hospital every time they cut off one of my toes. Then I can cut off somebody's dick and and then come right home. I mean, plus... They didn't miss and cut off a penis, you know? They didn't miss and cut off a penis, did they? No, I hope not. Yeah, I hope not. (laughs) I mean, it's good Giuliani was there. No, but it's all this kind of stuff about I'll solve the problem. I'm the solution to your problem. But there is no problem. That's the point. You know, when you talk about uh, immigrants coming into this country, to begin with, this is a country of immigrants. It was based on immigrants. It welcomed immigrants. Well, it didn't welcome Jews back in World War II. But, you know, uh, I won't argue that one. Okay. Uh, because the Jews came here and took all our jobs. And but no, the point I'm making is, is that, uh, that uh, he, he, he seems to think that there are problems everywhere with immigrants. Well, you know, New York City got an influx of how many did we get here? Something like 50,000 that were shipped in by your governor. Yeah, thank you, Greg. Into, into our city. And somehow we've learned to live with that problem. You know, and, and, and they're kind of uh, adapting to it and finding places for these people and helping them find jobs and all kinds of things like that. And they take yeah. the jobs nobody else wants, too. I mean, I, you know? I think that overall uh, and, you know, most sensible Democrats should probably take this position, too. I would agree and concede that there are some issues with our immigration oh, system. No question. Oh, yeah. Order. But, you know, our point is, I don't think extremist policies and, you know, solve uh, the problem. mass deportation is the way to solve the issue. Oh, a mass yeah. deportation I mean, would be a, would be an absolute. Well, that's asking for economic collapse, if you ask me. Uh, yeah. 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 You know. yeah. Be- <laughs> because believe it or not, those people who are illegals, who are yeah. working here, right. are working the jobs Number one, you don't Nobody. want, like, you know. Yeah. Right. And I, I think that any economist who's not a member of the Klan or the Aryan Brotherhood would probably tell you the same thing, you know. I mean, so, I mean, yeah. And, and other than that, it's just, it's not, look, the country still has values, in my opinion, or at least it should. You know, it still has I don't, founding I don't, I'm beginning to values. wonder if it does, to tell you the well, truth. I mean, there are a lot of people that make it sound that way, but I, I think that we can we can get back from the the brink here next Tuesday if enough people can do the Listen, right I've been saying this ever we'll since I've been doing talk shows. I really don't like America that much because I don't like what it did to the blacks and I don't like what it's done to uh, did uh, did to my people when they, they right. tried to come over here during the Holocaust. Uh, no. You know, they wouldn't accept Jews into this country. No. You know, Um it, it was terrible. Uh, and so I never completely loved this country. I felt that it, I always referred to it as having an illusion of democracy. You know, that it wasn't really a true democracy, that we didn't live up to those democratic ideals. And I really don't think we have. 
I, I mean, I and, and I, women, do. I look at the country right now, and I say, okay, let's say Trump doesn't win. The fact that there was a good chance he would bothers me enough. Yep. Okay? Fair. Yeah, why is it even close? Yeah, why is it even close? Fair. I mean, it's, it's, it's fair enough, but, I mean, the country has moved toward unwise places before out of fear and, 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 and stupidity and, you know, just ignorance, you know, if you will, because people were just not really in tune to what the real situation was, you know, and it's happened, you know, it's happened before. I mean, you know, there was a, you know, the Great Depression led to a great movement for communism in this country that was rejected, you know, and, and so on and so forth. Well, I want to take you, you know, back to when I was growing up and we had the House on American Activities Subcommittee. Sure, right. I mean, what a absolute uh, 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 witch hunt that was, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And and it was, it was that particular incident that really turned me off to this country. Mm -hmm. You know, that how could this be happening in the country that I was told was land of the free, home of the brave? Well, because it's not it's not built upon like any nation perfection. You know, I mean, it's just not. I no, think perfection is one thing. Stupidity and hatred and bigotry is quite another. Well, it's I mean, not look the first at what look, look, look at what this, such sin. But look at what this country did to black people, even after they were freed. Okay, we didn't well, free the slaves. Today. We simply moved them to another location. You know. Uh, it was years before blacks got any kind of parity in this country, and it's just been recently. Sure. And but I'm sure... We still, but we still have a lot of racism towards blacks in this country. Oh, yeah. Well, you can't stop hatred, stupid hatred by people. That That's something nope. you can't no. stop. Right. But what nope. you can stop is anything that prevents those people from having an equal opportunity, an equal chance, you know? And and uh, I think Charlie will agree with me on that one, right, Charlie? You know, yeah. and you've been a guy who's been fairly successful in your life, and you, you know, you probably haven't felt the real pressure of being black, or have you? No, uh, no, I, 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 I was kind of privileged. My father was a doctor. My mother was a, a high school math teacher. So I had very educated people yeah. raising me. And and education was something they impressed upon you. Yeah. And you probably didn't grow up in an inner city uh, air area. No, I mean, I, <laughs> there are a lot worse places in Chicago I could have brought, grown up, yeah. Right. Yeah. But all I'm saying is is that what, what, what this country did to blacks was unconscionable, absolutely unconscionable. And even once we freed the slaves, we didn't do anything to really free them. They just simply didn't. They could take their collars off, and that was it, yeah. you know? They sure, still well, were but, imprisoned by... But, you know, I think that you know. the point is overall that we did overcome it and that there were a large amount of people, not of the afflicted group's persuasion, that gave their lives or sacrificed a great deal in order to help make it happen. And I'm not just talking about white people who died in the Civil War. It was a large and complicated war. I mean, there were plenty of whites who stood up during the civil rights movement and others. And, and there, I mean, look, and there are other areas, you know, of these conflicts. So, I mean, what I'm saying is the overall conscience of the country has always worked hard to, to overcome these things, but it's not very easy sometimes. I mean, the world is what it is and people are what they are. Governments can't legislate that out of their, their mind, you know, and, right. and unfortunately, you know, we're not the only country to have committed such, sins, but I think that we've done a better job than some at trying to acknowledge it and work through it. It gets hard at I mean, times you gotta, you gotta, because you have people yeah. who'd want to deny it. You, you know? got to realize, I grew up at a time where I remember in Little Rock or someplace like that, the little girls and boys trying to go to school and having to be yeah. walked to school by federal agents Yeah, so they could go to school. And, yeah, they and, were they were escorted by the military, who were sent in by Eisenhower. And, you know? they, and they were a stopped at the man. doors by the governor, sure, who didn't right. want to let them in. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, and that was my lifetime. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. No, I don't think we'd see that kind of situation today. But, you know, I mean, 
Right. Let Trump be president and anything's possible. Well, right. Yeah. I mean, you'd like to hope not. Right. But, you know, I'm not. Look, I've said before, I'm not so naive to believe that these fascist tendencies can't weasel their way in slowly and and take over some things and try to take them away from us. That's how they'll do it. They're not going to hold up a sign that says I'm a big fascist and I want to throw out all your democracy and over, undo everything. You know, they're going to do it slowly. And that's what Trump's people have tried to do. You know, that's their look. Their project 2025 is a is a plan. You know, I mean, it's, yeah. it's a, do this, then do that, then do this and do that. This isn't the old days where, you know, you depose the king and put in the new king and then he just does whatever he wants, you know. They they understand we have a system and their idea is to manipulate it and to play it, you know. Mm. The job of the people is to wake themselves up from Instagram and TikTok for 15 minutes, just long enough to see what's going on and say, I don't accept that, you know. And, you know, uh, that's the challenge. I mean, for as much as... You might want to blame the country or the government. You know, I tend to blame other entities, you know, like greed and and corporations and things like that a little bit more for manipulating people than I do governments for just for me, the way I see it, you know, but I'm I'm looking at these. No perfection exists. I'm looking at these statistics right now that say, uh, you know, uh, over 50 million people have already voted, you know, in advance. That's good. It, which, by the way, Election Day, shouldn't we call that the last day you can vote? Shouldn't we yeah. just call it that? Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, 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 you know, uh, 41 percent are Democratic and 40 percent right now are Republican. Of that 40 percent who are Republicans... Well, first of all, of the 41 percent of Democrats, how, what percentage do you think voted for Trump? I mean, I would assume that it's pretty low, but. Yeah, yeah I'd say almost know. zero. I hope. Yeah. yeah. But out of the 40 percent uh, 40 of Republicans who voted, how many do you think voted for, uh, for Kamala? What Two percentage? or three percent. More than that, I'd say. I was going to say, I, I, you know, if she could get that number up into that five, six, seven percent range, I would have to think that's a massive. Yeah. Uh, a I'm ma- assuming a half massive of win, you know, for her in, in terms of being able to win the election, you know, get to reach the end result that they want here. I mean, that's I think fun. there are a lot of people out there who say, I'm a Republican and mm-hmm. I'm going to vote as a Republican, but mm-hmm. I can't stand Trump. That's my hope is that there's a lot of hell of a lot of And, and I don't think that's showing up in the polls. It's very possible. Yeah. You know. I don't think people are truthful to pollsters. Well, that's possible too. You know. And as I've said, I don't know how the demographics break down in all those polls. Yeah. You know, I don't know who they get to answer and I don't know how they take them. I know they don't just do them by phone anymore. They do other things. So I don't really know who answers them. I mean, do they really have a good, strong, represent a demographic set that really represents the electorate? Or do they have one that's really skewed? I mean, I know they might say we interviewed a thousand people and, you know, whatever. But, you know, were 800 of those people over the age of 55? You know, because if that were a poll, I would be skeptical of of it showing real results of what we'll see on election night. Now, these people do this for a living, so I mean, I know they've thought of this. I'm just saying I'm just saying I don't know. They don't I don't ever get that information. You know, I mean, unless you go read the poll itself, they probably have it in there maybe. And mm-hmm. I think that's what the the real pollsters do, you know, the the people who break it down for you on CNN or MSNBC. I mean, the guys whose job is to sit at a desk all day and read these polls and things and interpret that. Oh. And I just don't hear here too much is a about st- it. Here is a statistic that I didn't give you. Of the 62,434,479 mail-in and early in-person boat votes uh, requested nationally, 44% were Democratic and 30% were Republican and 29% are other. I don't know what that means. Yeah, I mean, 
It just seems like there's more Democratic votes there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there are Democrats seem to be open to just more ways to voting, period, you know, from what right. I've gathered, you know, which is probably not much to think about, really. I mean, I think that was the same way last time, you know. Well, I mailed, I mean, we mailed yes. ours in, and I'm sure they're going to count unless the mailbox was set on fire. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure it'll go in, you know. I mean, it's, I mean, you know, it's talked about before. You know, she doesn't have to break new ground. She just has to repeat what Biden did, you know? Yeah. I mean, she doesn't all... really have to win anybody over to her side. Well, she see, just she's... has to get the same but... people to vote for that voted for Biden. She's got yeah. a deficit, and her deficit is she's a woman. Yeah. Okay. Well, I can't deny that. That she yeah. doesn't have a large lead in men she I mean, she doesn't have. She, sure. she 62% of the men say they're voting for Trump. Right. Yeah. Why he's a real man, isn't he? Crybaby well, no, wimp. I, mean, I, I can't deny that's that. The problem. What'd that's you, the problem. Uh, go, yeah, uh, uh, that happens to be Kevin, who we can't really see because he's if you in light his up car. a cigar, we'd see you. There you go. There we go. What were you gonna say, uh, 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 Kevin? Well, that's the problem. Is most of these supposed followers don't listen to Trump. They listen to the snippets, crap like that. And that's what they're basing their voting on. And the polls don't capture that kind of crap. Yeah. So, you know, what I'm saying is that these guys, because I've talked to a lot of people, and, you know, if you really sit down and question these people, they don't know, you know, some of them do, but most of them don't know shit what's going on. They just use the, oh, well, he's a hard ass, and I'm, I'm voting for a hard ass. And, and they don't know the other shit. You know, there's a lot of times that I'll just turn around and say, have you ever watched a documentary on Larry Cohn? Uh, 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 not Larry Cohn. Or, on, uh, uh, I mean, yes, yeah, Stone. Stone. Yeah. Back, the one that they did a while back. Yeah. Uh, before all this, you know, when, when Trump was uh, being mentored by him. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's all you got to watch is something like that and know what he's up to now. But you're expecting these people to watch a because documentary. But they, yeah. Correct. They don't. They just watch the snippets. They say, oh, he's a hard ass. You know, blah, blah, well, blah. Well, there's more than that. And if you you're know, watching Fox, you're not looking at anything else or anything else. For a couple of days, I ensconced myself in Fox and listening to what Trump people had to say and so on. And suddenly realized, if that's your only ecosystem, if that's the only thing you pay attention to, then the, all this non-reality, all these lies, all these folk tales that are going around suddenly become true. Because you don't have yeah. the opposite information and the, uh, to be able to come to a... Gaslighting, whatever you want to call it. They believe it, and they don't stop believing it, and all of a sudden they're stuck in that environment. Yeah. Uh, and, and, they, yeah. and they just go. I want to go vote for Trump. Why? Ask them why. And they don't have an answer. Yeah. But the because fact. Because he's a hard ass or some simple thing like that. I think, I don't think the fact that Kamala's black is a deficit to her because it wasn't a deficit to Obama. Yeah. Okay. I think the biggest deficit she has is she's a woman. Yep. And I think that is, uh, that is a hard nut to crack, so to speak. I, I, I think it's. Um, that's a real issue. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I think that it's very likely that if the same exact words on the campaign trail right now were being uttered by a guy who looks like Gavin Newsom running around, that we might have a different yeah. narrative tonight. As positive as oh, ours is, I think it might be. I would better. think that Maybe. if Gavin Newsom were running right now, he would be 20 points ahead of Trump. I believe so. I don't know if it'd be that much, but it, it, I think that it would be even better off than we are tonight. Yeah. And we're in an okay spot, you know, um, but I'm just, so well, that's for people no who slight are worried, to her. For people who are worried, just remember one thing, that, uh, yeah, it may be close, but, uh, you know, it, it could go either way. Yeah. And you're, of course, going to think negatively, oh, my God, we're, we're not going to win. But there's just as much chance we're going to win as we're going to lose. Sure, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
the but, only problem is, is that we still have this damn, you know, uh, what do you call it? Uh, electoral college. Yeah. Electoral college we have to deal with. And in that case, she may not win, you know, and he will probably once again lose the popular vote. There's, I have no doubt about that. Me either. When, when, when was the last time we had a Republican that did win the popular vote? George W. Uh, Bush four. lost it two times in no, a row. No, he didn't lose it two times no. in a row. The second he time, won the popular vote in, 20, in 2004. Yeah, oh. yeah. But, That's the only time, like in the last 30 years, that Republicans won a popular vote. Okay, so I was wrong by one. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, you know, Trump, Trump has never won the popular vote. Uh -huh. Never. And he's lost it by as much as three million to five million or six million, yeah. I think, where Biden was concerned. It was seven million. Was it seven? Yeah. Yeah, this last time I think it was upwards of a seven, yeah. Yeah. But that's only because the Democrats uh, fixed it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, they all, we all voted three times. Yeah. yeah. I, I did. did. By a lot. I did. And uh, I, I I know that there's some immigrants that are living down the street that are, have voted already ten times. Right. So, well, you know, we don't put up with no voter fraud here in Ohio. When people commit voter fraud here, we prosecute them. You know, for example, we just indicted a guy for voter fraud a few days ago, and turns out they went to arrest him, and fuck, he's been dead for years. So, <laughs> <laughs> our, our state attorney general was just so proud of himself standing up there giving that press conference about the six people that they had indicted for voter fraud. Yeah. We don't, put up, we don't put up with none of that crap here. And then they put the list of names out, and the press got a hold of it. And about a half an hour later, they said, hey, you know, this guy here has been dead for like five years, right? <laughs> so, you know. It's, uh, who's your governor? Well, the governor's Mike DeWine, but we have an attorney general named uh, something, whatever, uh, Yost or something, whatever, Ned Yost, I think. So, yeah. you know, he's a real ass clown, Trump sucker. You know, he wanted to get on TV and say that he was cutting out all the, you know, he wanted Trump to watch him for 30 seconds on Fox News and be like, oh, that guy there, he's good, you know, good, you know. But, you know, after the soundbite was over with, you know, on Fox, you know, our local media here worked into it. And I sent these guys the story. I mean, they they indicted a guy for voter fraud that's been dead. And they didn't, I mean, they didn't indict somebody for using the dead guy's name. They Indicted him. Indicted the dead guy. <laughs> Saying that he voted twice in an election when he wasn't even alive. Oh, boy. So, you know, I mean, you know, apparently he didn't vote twice, you just, know? It, this is becoming, he was fucking a, dead. It's becoming a goddamn cartoon. Yeah. You yeah. know? I mean, oh, God. You know? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I grew up at a time, okay, where I could say, Okay, we had the the uh, House on American Activities subcommittee went through all that. We went through the uh, witch hunts on the on people being communists. And it was a terrible sure. time, and sure. I can say all those things form my opinion about this country and about what I think about politically. And the reason I'm really a leftist. Uh, but the fact of the matter is that. Uh, you know, it, it it it's no different now. It's worse now than it was then. Now yeah. it's just completely a cartoon of itself. Mm. You know, yeah. B before people like McCarthy came along, they did what they did, okay, uh, and uh, they they created a, a a real problem in this country. But eventually, people got wise to them. And eventually, they threw McCarthy out of office, and McCar right. you know, McCarthy well, was an see, alcohol. That's, that's what we need. We need people to get wise. Well, and exactly. That seems to be a fault right now. Yeah, but but <laughs> we yeah. yeah, but we got wise to it, and uh, it, 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 it it things got better. We haven't gotten wise to this guy. He's been around Correct. now, running for office. For three different terms. Well, but but if he loses this time, maybe the narrative on that will change a little bit because we'll be able to say that he won the first one when people tried him out. Now he's lost the next two. And so I, I guess I'm saying I don't know that the verdict is in on that yet. You know, we, we may be able to say, look, he, he was rejected the last two. And it's very possible that this time 
a few of his closest homeboys will get rejected. I mean, what if Trump loses that night? Sherrod Brown gets reelected in Ohio. Ted Cruz gets thrown out of Texas. This lady wins the Senate race in Florida. I mean, the whole narrative suddenly is going to be and the Republicans totally different. and the Republicans are going to have to change their tune. Correct, and I think that might actually finally teach them their lesson when they have no Trump and no power. Yep. Yeah. But we'll see. Right. Right. First, it's got to happen. Just yeah, change the exactly. subject for a second. Um, the World Series is over with. The Dodgers won 7-6. Oh, okay. Wow. And I'm sure everybody's thrilled about that. Well, yeah, I, we'll I, I live in New York, and uh, my friend Shecky, I would feel sorry for him. I've never seen you wear any sports memorabilia. Uh, I used to wear a, I used to wear a Giants cap. Oh, you know, okay. some giant shirts and things like that, but it's only because the giants gave them to me. Well, that was, yeah. yeah. You, wore some A's, you wore some A's stuff, too. But what? Did you, you wore A's stuff, too, did you? Oh, uh, A's. Excuse me. I wore the A's. Excuse me. I wore yeah, the A's I stuff. I've never seen you in the giants. Stuff. Yeah, I, I always wore the A's stuff because I knew oh. what's his name. Who was the, who? Yeah. Huh? The Haas family, right? It, it, uh, wait, what's that was, was before that. What was his name again? Haas. Yeah. Walter Haas, yeah. Yeah, Wally Haas. Wally Haas was a friend. And he, uh, yeah. you know, he'd give me the caps and he'd give me the shirts. And oh, he'd, uh, he'd say, I'd go out to the games and, you know, yeah, sit right behind the... the internet. Huh? That was before the internet. Yeah. <laughs> and then I would go out. Well, one time, one time Wally said to me, anytime you want to see a game, let me know. I'll get, you know, get, give you tickets and come out and see it, Okay. So I, so my girlfriend wanted to go to a uh, uh, A's game. So I call up Wally's office. I said we want some tickets. So they immediately sent me some tickets out. And my girlfriend and I trot out there, and then the, we give them our tickets, and they start walking us up, and up, and up, <laughs> and up. And now my back is to the wall, the upper wall. And what was playing down there on the baseball field were essentially fleas, okay? <laughs> the little tiny bugs. And boy, did I go after Wally on that one. And he said, that shouldn't have happened. And the next time, uh, he got tickets for my girlfriend and I, and we were right behind the uh, the dugout. So, yeah. In the in the owner's seats. So, you know. yeah. There you go. And I, I got to throw out the uh, first pitch. And really? I, yeah, I got the... Wow. Uh, yeah, and I don't, you know, Did meet, you come meet. close to the batter. I actually <laughs> hit the catcher in the crotch. There you go. But the thing was that At least somebody I, I said, the "Oh, ball. good, I'll get, I'll throw out the first pitch." So they take me out to the mound, and now it looks like uh, the batter is in San Francisco. I mean, I never realized the amount of space between that yeah. pitcher's mound and the batter. And it's six like feet, enormous. Inches. What? Sixty feet, six inches. But I yeah. made it. I made it over the. I made it over the plate to hit the there you go. catcher in the crotch. Catcher in the crotch. Wasn't that a book? Ah, catcher in the crotch. Yeah, catcher in the <laughs> crotch. Okay. Catcher well, the anyway, let there, me there, see. There's like a ten minute video on YouTube of the catcher catching the balls that way a lot of times. Yeah. Anyway. One ball smashes two balls, and now you got a catcher rolling, rolling around on the ground. Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't sound fun. Anyway, you know, uh, 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 in case people are waiting for uh, Amy, she's not doing any shows this week. She's on. Uh, on w w the kind of duty that uh, you're going to be doing it, right? On on Tuesday night, uh, Kevin. Uh, starting Saturday, we got four days. Oh. Saturday, so oh. Monday and Tuesday. Okay, so he's going to be doing that. We're going to be around. I think I'm on Tuesday. We're going to do a show. Okay. okay. And then we might do a show Wednesday. I haven't decided yet. I'll let you know on on Tuesday. Uh, mm -hmm. And because uh, if there's more to talk about. I, I certainly want to let you talk about it. My plane doesn't leave till eight o'clock at night or nine o'clock at night the next day, so no big deal. Anyway, hey, listen, that's it. You know, yeah. uh, thank you so much for joining me tonight. It's been a nice little discussion. Hopefully, we'll have a few more days of being able to talk about the election. 
and then yeah. we can get our sanity back. Well, yeah. or maybe it just gets crazier. We don't know. Charlie, thank you so Good. much. I appreciate it. I appreciate it so much from you, uh, uh, my dear friend, Alan. Uh, Josh, good having you here. Brian, hey, Brian, Kevin, yeah. Kevin, are you, you're delivering food, right? No, I just got home. I'm going to bed. Okay, have a yeah, have a nice nap. Anyway, everybody, thank you for joining me. And why don't you uh, just give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you, okay? There they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our citizen panel for tonight. Uh, there's no Amy tonight, but uh, we'll be back again tomorrow night. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, you know what to do. Tell her I love her, okay? Good night, everybody. This is a, this is a test. For the next 60 seconds, 